in hiring uh, uh, new people coming in as as interns, as assistant engineers, etc. Uh, I've had success finding quality people um, who ha are graduates of some of the recording schools, uh, but I don't think that's the only way in. Uh, I certainly think that the only way into this kind of uh, expertise is to just get started. Um, now, it used to be that to build a quality recording studio and equip it at a competitive level was out of the reach of an individual. I mean, we're talking about hundreds of thousand dollars, a million dollars, build a studio, a recording console, a top tier recording console, world class cost six or seven hundred thousand dollars. That's out of the reach of everybody, unless you're in the commercial studio business. Um, that's changed. That's no longer necessary. You can start getting uh, um, multi-track DAW systems, uh, whether it's Pro Tools or a competitive system of that, uh, to that. For You can be up and running for a couple thousand dollars with a very qu high quality uh, complement, and you can start recording. Um, I don't think that makes you an engineer. I don't think it makes you an engineer until you're really doing good work. Uh, occasionally, somebody people ask me, what does it take to be a producer? Well, the, the flip answer is you just call yourself a producer. You know, If you think you're a producer, I guess you're a producer. How many ways are there to produce a record or a, or a webcast or a DVD or as many ways as there are producers? Everybody approaches it different. The combination of creative people in every project is different. But in terms of, of educating yourself to being a good recording engineer, this takes some time. And it takes, it, it really, uh, I can even say that better. I can quote one of the real deans of recording engineering. Uh, one of the greatest all time, one of the guys in the pantheon, is Bruce Swedeen. And I think people still see him around and see his name. Of course, he did uh, all the classic Michael Jackson records and Quincy Jones and many, many things. One of the vet true, real veterans. Bruce has a great line about record engineering. He always says, record engineering is easy after the first 10,000 hours. And so it's like a lot of things. You just have to pay your dues and set up the mics and record them and get them properly balanced. Um, there's two clusters of areas where I think record engineers need to really focus their energy. One is out in the studio, putting up different mics, placing them and moving them, getting out of your chair, walking into the studio, making changes, making adjustments, doing it properly, doing it under the radar of the artist, but improving the sound you're recording by making the adjustments every, every hour. And the second thing that, that, uh, it, that is really the critical piece is learning to balance. And learning to balance means you have to sit at the desk, whether you're doing it at your uh, DAW workstation uh, with a mouse, not my favorite way to balance. I still think having moving faders is helpful. Uh, having faders is helpful, uh, but that could be my old school experience speaking. Um, and learning to balance. You have to sit there and take 24 tracks, take 40 tracks, take 60 tracks, and balance them into a musically satisfying blend. This is easy to describe and, and not as easy to do. There are a tremendous amount of C plus to B recordings out there. It's pretty easy to get a B. Um, you got to be pretty tone deaf to, to, to fall below B today. But it's just as hard. I don't hear a lot of A and A plus stuff. I don't hear a lot of stuff where the actual sound and balance of this tickles your ears and just you got to hear it again and you want to hear it again because it just is so pleasing, so hooky, so instru so compelling. And when you listen to recordings, I think it's the balance that, that, that captures your, your attention. And it doesn't matter what genre you're talking about. If you're talking about Kanye West or a Led Zeppelin record or, or uh, a classic Michael Jackson record, because I mentioned Bruce Swedeen. You go back and you listen to any Michael Jackson record, there are 100 things going on on that musical track, the whole song, and you can hear them all. 
and you can hear them in a proportion and a, and a balance that just sounds, you can't imagine hearing it another way. You listen to that and you go, boy, I, I really don't think I could imagine the snare drum being louder or that little little percussion thing. I don't need it louder, but it's there. I got it all. It's all helping me.